Good evening everyone and welcome to our Hair Brain Live Takeover with Slate Education. My name is James Akers and this is the co-founder and director Michael Pizzolides. What's up guys? So we're here with Petra, this gorgeous model who I met Hello. quite a few years ago back in Australia and we get the pleasure of cutting her hair again. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is, Jane's been stalking her for a few years now. It's uh, kept in touch naturally. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. It's amazing, obviously, to do another hair brain live like we do every month. We've got a really exciting haircut for you today. Um, but even more exciting than that, it's a special birthday edition because we have our main man here, James Akers. It's his birthday. He's turned 17 today, so all you ladies don't get excited. Cool. So, as we said, we've got the beautiful Petra here today with us. So, what we're going to do, we're going to give you a really cool haircut, nice little choppy bob, very, very short, up to the ears, and then a lovely little choppy fringe at the end of it. Now, Petra came in with a little bit of a cheeky one, a little bit of an undercut. So what we're doing is we're not actually going to touch the undercut. It, I've just left it. I'm, I'm, I like it. I think it's quite short. You know, I, it's, it's very severe in terms of it's right across the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with it. I'm going to make it almost like a box bob feeling where it's just going to sit over the top, nice and choppy and graduate, and then that beautiful fringe in. So for me, guys, I always try and start the place that I think is the hardest. So wherever I think that I have the most chance of making a mistake, I'm not gonna make a mistake by the way, don't worry. But wherever I feel like I have the biggest chance of going wrong, I try and start there. So in this instance, one thing that you don't wanna make a mistake with is possibly the length over the front of the face. So the length that the client sees at the front is probably the most important part and that she's gonna be most anxious about. So if you just start at that point where you feel like it has the most chance of perhaps not sitting right. So what I mean is if you start from the back and you end up in the wrong place in the front, too short, too long, it's uncomfortable, you haven't done it right. So if you start in that place, it gives you a nice guideline to work back from. So. Cool, so guys, please let us know where you're from. We've got people tuning in from New Zealand, Trinidad and Seattle. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Please like and share our video as well. Uh, so, Michael, when you're choosing the length here, like we're doing now, mm -hmm. how did you come to the decision of, of that choice well, of length? Well, I mean, basically, I think choice of length is very important in terms of suitability. So, what, you know, what suits someone, what doesn't suit someone, and the general feel of what you're going for. So, you know, if you want something that's really soft and beautiful, you're probably going to go for something a little bit longer, maybe. If you're looking for something a little bit more edgy, you're probably going to go for something a bit shorter. Obviously, Petra is beautiful, so we can get away with a lot of different things. So judging by this, what I always try and do is I always try and go maybe a touch longer than I'm imagining and just see how it sits. You know, we're very lucky as hairdressers. We get to do things visually. So what I see is what I get. So I can see how it looks on Petra and I can change it. And this is something that, you know, maybe colorists do when they look at the color and they check the tone and they think maybe the tone should be a little bit different as well. So it's the same thing in hairdressing. We always try and visualize what we're doing. So right now I'm looking at what I'm doing and I'm assessing as I work if it's the right length or not. So I've gone a little bit longer than I think, so I have the ability to go back in and take it a little bit shorter if I think it can just be a little bit more dynamic as well. So that's it really. Choice of length is everything. It's key. Once you're happy with it, you can start refining it. So what I did was I had quite a lot of elevation. So, you know, it's, got a, it's gonna have a nice soft feeling at the end. Obviously, the more elevation you have, so in other words, the higher you lift the hair away from the head, the softer your line's gonna be. The more you bring it down, the stronger it's gonna be. So by elevating slightly in that first section, it's gonna create a little bit of graduation and therefore a little bit of a softer shape. Beautiful. Cool. We've got some regulars joining in. Hi, Dennis from Old School Sassoon. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Maria, and thank you very much, Maria. It's very <laughs> sweet, darling. Um, We've also got people tuning in from all over, from Essex, from Michigan, from South Dakota, all over the place. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We could, thanks guys for tuning in. Uh, you know, we really want you to do a big favour us on this one. We want you to wish James a happy birthday. So <laughs> everyone out there, please comment, please say happy birthday to the <laughs> main man. You know, ask him what he wants, send it in the post, don't be afraid. You know, any alcohol that's flying around the house, don't worry, you can send it to London. 
will be more than happy. And yeah, obviously, as always, guys, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. We love hearing questions. So let us know where you're from. Let us know what questions you have. Let us know if, you're, if there's something that you're not quite sure about and that you did today in the salon. If anything you can think of that you want to know a little bit more about within the hair cutting world. So right now what you can see as I'm letting the shape stand out and I'm seeing how the shape works from the front to the back. So I'm keeping a very visual, a very visualness by allowing the hair to stick out from the head. So you can see by taking these nice sections from the front to the back, it allows me to have a clearer vision of what I'm doing. If you take too many small sections, you lose a little bit the vision of what you're creating. So I think it's a really important point to make sure that your section has a beginning and an end that you can see visually. I would normally, for balance reasons, do one side and then the other side. But when you get a little bit more experience for doing a nicer flow of a haircut, you can start to work one side and then the other. Dennis will know this, you know, the old school Sassoon guys, they like to work one side first and then the other side. And I feel you get a better flow from the front to the back. So uh, unfortunately these days, a lot of bobs, they kind of feel a bit too high in the back, a bit too wavy in the front, because there's not enough flow between the front and the back. So just by working this way, it allows us to have more flow in our work, which I think is very important. So apart from the fact that you wanted to see where that line was instantly at the front. Yeah. Is there any other differences from working front to back as opposed to back to front? Yeah, I mean, look, in this case, it's, 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 it's much less because I'm working horizontally. So it means that the weight distribution is more evil. And you can see when I bring it down, it doesn't really push the head front or back. But what happens is, normally if you work from the back, you're kind of encouraging the head to be shorter in the back and pushing the weight and the length in the front. So what you normally get is more of these triangle shapes, A-line, something goes shorter in the back, longer in the front, if you stand in the back. Normally if you're standing at the front, especially taking again vertical sections, you have a tendency to pull the head forward as you work, therefore encouraging the head to be shorter in the front, longer in the back, and encouraging the head to sit more back away from the face. Now the way I'm working today is very horizontally, which means that actually the weight distribution is much more even, and therefore I'm not really pushing the head front or back with my sections. But that's generally how I like to think about it. So guys, we've got a beautiful colour done as well today. Let us know what you think of the colour. Um, we've got Francesco behind the camera and he'll be able to just tell us a little bit about what he did to, to, get, to, this, um, to get to this finished look a bit later. Yeah, so obviously beautiful colour, so thank you Francesco. You know, we'll steal the camera off him a little bit later and, and uh, let you guys see the magic behind the camera as well. <laughs> the Italian stallion as we call him. So we've got guys from Italy, South Africa, from Greece, all over America, all over the UK. Amazing. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Please like and share the video. So, Get the application uh, out there. We have to say a good yasu to all the uh, Greeks out there, you know. <laughs> got, to, got to show off my Greek skills a little bit there. <laughs> Don't worry, we're teaching the team as well. So you can see the shape building now that I bring it down. Lovely little short shape in the front. Nicely comes through with the graduation. Worked it in horizontally, but as soon as you comb it down, you can see the shape, how it blends in nicely as well. So again, working with the undercut, it was already there, and we're just working through. For those of you that are just tuning in, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Michael Pizzolini. This is the gorgeous Petra. This is the absolutely stunning James A. Kiss. It's his birthday today, so you have to send him some birthday wishes as well. We'll send him his home address. You can send him a card as well yourself. That's fine. In terms of what we did today, Petra had a beautiful little undercut. Okay, so she came in with the undercut. What we did was we took sections from the front all the way to the back and we worked horizontally. We started from the front and we worked horizontally all the way to the back, each time elevating slightly more in order to create this lovely little flow we're getting. In. So that's it, guys. So let us know what you think. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Please, we love technical questions. There's no stupid questions, only stupid answers. So that'll come from me. So, you know, but don't be afraid. Just let us know what you're thinking. If you like it, as we said, please, you know, give us a thumbs up and ask the questions. Perfect. All right, Michael. So what's been going on with Slate? Where have we been? What's been happening? Yeah, I mean, all good. Kind of, as always, crazy days. So we've got this amazing shoot coming up. Um, you know, we've got this amazing guy, Panos, who's the uh, photographer for Infringe magazine. 
you know, he's going to be doing our shoot with us on the 25th. We've been doing castings all day today, you know, coming up with concepts and mood boards. It's going to be a really cool shoot. It's called Divergence. So it's a little bit of a play on uh, these different characters. So we have our classic characters, which are our classic haircuts, let's say, and classic styling. And then we have our characters as well, which are the rebels, the kind of like creative ones, creative cuts on the people who are like musicians and things like that. So you have to stay tuned, guys, for the 2019 Slate Collection. It's going to be off the chain, guys. So we're really excited to release it to you. And we'll be releasing it around uh, Southern International. So, you know, if you guys are here in London for Southern International, make sure you just send us a DM. You know, we love to meet up with people. So it'll be really exciting, guys. Okay, a couple of questions coming through. Yeah, I love this. So, show. first of all, from Bobby. Thank you, Bobby, so much for the question. Thanks, Bob. Bobby said, what shape is your line? So at this point, what I'm doing is, it's actually, it's a difficult one because I would consider this to be more of a square just because the weight kind of sits equal from the front to the back. If anything, it's a little bit rounded because the weight does ever so curve back because of the head shape. But fundamentally, it's more of a square shape because if we see the length from the front to the back, it works on a pretty square basis. So it, it's not a perfectly square shape. Um, and any of you who have watched our hair brain lives before have probably seen me do some square shapes where we really accentuate the corners. But I would say this is our, our rounded shape. So it's round. It's, it's scrammed basically, exactly. Yeah. It's a little bit scrammed. So, so it, it, in, in my technical term, I would say this is a round shape, but visually when you look at it, you might think it's a bit square just because it's not extreme round. Cool, I hope that answers your question, Bobby. Let us know if it doesn't. Yeah. Um, Kim from San Diego has asked, Hi, tell Kim. me about your comb choice and does that affect the tension used for your cut? <laughs> well, actually, this comb is a very, very special comb because it's stolen from the birthday boy. <laughs> so this is the lovely James Akers comb. I would actually be honest with you, it's not the comb I would always use day to day. Um, I normally like to use a much smaller YS Park one. Um, but what I find is obviously this one is quite nice with the wide teeth if you really don't want to get much tension in. So if you really want to work with less tension, you use the wider tooth. If you want something with more tension, you use the thinner teeth. Now, what you've got to remember is that when you use tension, there's certain things that it's going to create. Now, one thing that it helps when we talk about graduation is blend. So anytime I tug on the hair quite hard, sorry Petra, but anytime I tug on the hair quite hard, what I'm doing is I'm creating tension. What happens is when it goes back, it bounces back. When it bounces back, it has a tendency to blend better. So if we just comb the hair down, we can see that there's quite a nice blend within it. Even though there's an undercut, it's not quite connected, just because of the tension involved. So tension is a great thing. So if you ever do graduation, and you find you get some weight lines in it, it doesn't blend nicely, try actually taking a little bit more tension. So using the small teeth of the comb, and make sure you have a little bit of tension, and what you'll find is your graduation will blend better. So if you want blended graduation, use a bit of tension. I hope that answers your question. Beautiful. Uh, should we just do a quick recap? A couple yeah, of people are just tuning in. Of course, of course, we'd love to. So, I'm Michael Pizzolides. This is the beautiful Petra. Hello. We're from Slate Hair Education. This is the gorgeous James Akers. It's his birthday today. So if you think that he should have a nice birthday, you have to send him wishes. So we'd like you to comment and say happy birthday to James Akers. Please do. So a little recap of what we did. Sorry, Petra. So Petra came in. She had this amazing little undercut. So if I show you the side that I haven't cut yet, you guys can see a little bit better where the undercut is. So Petra came in with this undercut. I didn't cut it, I didn't do anything with it. It was already like this, a nice little bit grown out from a shade, and I liked it. We're gonna work with it today. So what we did was we actually took sections from the front to the back. So we just took our first section as a nice horizontal section from the front to the back. We combed the head down. We brought it with elevation, but quite low. We put a lot of tension in, and we just worked from the front all the way towards the back. So each time lifting up the hair and I actually connected it to the undercut with my fingers. So I held it with a lot of tension and connected it in. What we then did was very simply took sections that repeated the same angle as the last. And again, lifted it a little bit higher, lots of tension, cut it in. Same all the way across. So right now it's just a repetition, sections from the front to the back. 
and working it through. So what's this creating for us? It's creating a very, very heavy uh, graduation. So it's not a line, it's not a layer, but it's very heavy graduation. So it's building up the shape and it's working from the front to the back. So the weight's getting pushed to the back. And what I'll do is I've just brought out a new section and I'll show you. If that makes sense, guys, give us a thumbs up. If it doesn't, let us know and we'll do a recap. That's what I like. Pedro's like, I'm going to cut my own hair now. I don't even really need you anymore. She's like, I got this. Sounds easy. So, important thing guys, nice comb down, lots of tension if you want it to blend and work it into your guidelines. So I use my fingers a lot. If you guys have watched my videos, you probably know my little secret by now. It's not such a secret anymore. I pull the head down. I use my fingers to measure how much elevation I have against the skin. When I'm happy, my hands close to give me more tension and then I start to work through. So this one, it gives me consistent elevation as I work across the head shape. One other thing I like to do to keep consistent elevation is I try and actually not take my hand out of the hair when I comb the next section. So what I mean is my hand stays here, I take the comb in, I lift it up. When I'm here, I know that I have the same elevation and therefore I can just grab the rest of the hair. So by actually not taking my hand away from the hair, I find I have much better consistent elevation. I think that's a really good tip because Every time, a lot of the time when I teach and I say, elevate a little bit more, they go, oh, well, how do I know where I was last time? So yeah. it's just feeling that. That level. So I think that's the two ones. One of them is actually, you know, using your hand as a guideline of how much elevation you use. So as that, if you can see, Francesco, me holding my hand there is just allowing me to make sure that I have the same elevation every time. And what I'll do then after that is I will actually not take my hand out of the hair afterwards. So I have my hand measuring how high it is. I, every time I comb, my hand stays in until the comb is on my fingers. So I comb, my hand is there, so I keep the same elevation. So what I don't do is I don't comb with my hand away and then put my comb back in. I'll always comb and keep my hand in the same place. If that makes sense, guys, let me know. People, a lot of people said it makes sense. Perfect. Um, Paula, you've asked the question, because you're going a little higher with each section, do you have any tips on keeping a straight line? Uh, do, do you mean just in, a, in, a, in sort of a line as a one length? or You mean horizontally like that? Or you mean like your graduation? Or you mean the shape that we've got across? Uh, let us know, Paula, exactly what you mean. I think maybe she just means as a, if you were to just cut a line, <laughs> We're not sure about that. Oh, Paula right? said you've answered it. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. <laughs> you see, Job we done. answer your questions before <laughs> you even get there. That's how good they are, guys. Come on. <laughs> so, you have to give us a thumbs up for at least answering questions before they've even been asked. Sorry, I think we're having a couple of technical difficulties behind the camera there with a bit of a battery. So, please bear with us, guys. James is probably just going to have a drink. Okay. Beautiful. So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm starting my second side. So what we'll do is, for those of you who are tuning in, we'll just do a lovely little recap as always. I'm Michael. This is the beautiful Petra. This is the stunning James. It's his birthday, so we have to mention it a few times. He's given up his birthday to come work, guys, to give him free education. You have to give him a little bit of love for that. So, what we did with the beautiful Petra is we've done the one side. I'm gonna show you now the second side. Now, the second side is exactly the same as the first side. So now when you see this, you're gonna see the way I did the first side. So if you're just tuning in, don't worry, you haven't missed anything because we're going to do the same thing all over again. So what we do is we start from the front and we work our way to the back, okay? The reason I start from the front is because I'm 100% sure the length that it's going to sit around the face. Now, the only thing I have to be really, really, really careful of is that if, if I mess up the second side, I'm going to have to do the first side again because the length will not balance in the front. So this is my perfect opportunity to take a little bit more time when I'm doing the second side and make sure that it's the correct length. Now the way I do this is I always go a bit longer on the second side for safety and then I always take it a little bit shorter till it's the same. So if we 
look at Pedro's, if I bring down the side that I've already cut, we can see that it sits kind of just on top of the cheekbones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it a little bit longer and I'm going to see how well it balances. Well, I've got a couple of little questions. Yeah, love um, Morgan was just asking about the gowns. Yeah. So she absolutely loves the gowns. I'm wondering where you got them from. Uh, so we get them uh, custom made for ourselves with our logo on them. I mean, if you really want, you can just give me a direct message and, uh, and we'll hook you up with some gowns. So if you DM us, you will let you know. Uh, and Marina has asked, what's the goal for this haircut? I mean, shape. Yeah, shape-wise, as we said, it's a slightly rounded shape, but it's something that's fitted. What I like is the fact that with this haircut, if you wear it forwards, it's going to come in like quite a stacked, heavy graduation. And if you wear it back, it's going to sit as quite a soft, elegant shape. So this is going to have those two things. Wear it forwards, really strong, wear it back nice and soft. So it's going to have a little bit of a dynamicness to it, where it's going to be allowed to change. And so we like that whole element of change within it. So it's something that you're going to be able to either wear it forwards and it's going to be a much stronger rounded shape or it's going to be a rounded shape when you push it back off the face as well. So it's either softer or stronger depending on how you style it. And I think that is something really nice, something that can change with the way that you style it. So you can see that I just worked from the front to the back, but I have a feeling this side's a little bit longer because I tried to go a little bit longer. Because always when you're going on the second side, if you do one side and then you do the second side and you end up too short, you're gonna to have to do the first side again. So what we try and do is when we do the first side, we try and do the second side a little bit longer, check it and do it until it's the same on both sides. Hope that makes sense, guys. Yeah, go. I think so. Bobby just asked the question that I think you just answered, but just to recap, Again. asking how do you believe both, how do you uh, balance both sides when you start the second side? If we leave that second side a little bit longer, make sure it's longer, and then if we're like this, then we can just work it up bit by bit until we have our balance. Exactly. So cautiously is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cautiously. So what we always do is we know where we have a chance of going wrong. I think that is the beauty of, of having the experience and the knowledge, is I know that I can make a mistake at this point. So I'm just gonna slow down and take my time in that area and then move on. But I know that if I take my time in that area, I can do the rest with my eyes closed. Beautiful. Yeah, don't make me do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> Petra's like, no, 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 no. You can, you can look, man, it's fine. So we're just going to do a little check of the length again. Yeah, just a tiny bit longer. That's perfect. That's exactly where we want to be. We always want to be a little bit longer on the second side and slowly raise it up. I remember when I first was qualified and first started doing clients and I'd feel someone's hair and I'd end up feeling it really quickly and like being scared of them seeing that it's slightly longer on one side. But when you get a bit more experience, I think it's actually much nicer to show and just take that time to show it's a bit longer and then to go back and get it back. I mean, clients can, can understand when you're taking your time and when you're doing things properly. And the truth is that if you take your time and you do things properly, you'll actually finish a haircut quicker. Instead of spending half an hour refining it, which means fixing it basically, you will actually just do your basic shape and be done with it. And that's something that's really, really nice is when you get the experience level to just put in a good shape straight away. Cool. So again, we're just refining that second side, making sure it's the same length. You know, I remember when I first started teaching, you know, and I had my first demo that I was doing at Sassoon Academy, and I, I was just shitting myself. I'm going to do it so wrong. Everyone's going to notice that it's wrong. And what I did was I ended up not checking the haircut. And so what happened when I finished was it was not the same on both sides. <laughs> so I ended up like the model stood up and I, I just saw that it was unbalanced and I went, oh my God. But what that taught me straight away was the importance of actually checking and actually showing people that no matter how good you are at cutting, you have to check your work. There's no such thing as a perfect haircut. There's only such a thing as checking it again and again. So we check our work as we go, because we're not robots, we're not perfection. We are just diligent and we just check a lot as we go. That's how you get a really solid haircut. So from now on, I actually make a point to show everyone how much I check, because there's nothing to be ashamed of checking. We're not robots. We're just trying to do really, really clean haircuts. 
Dennis has asked, what's your tolerance for each side, quarter of an inch? <laughs> well, we, we try we try and not make mistakes. I think the truth is that obviously as you as you get longer and longer the hair, you have more of a chance of doing things wrong. It's much harder to create balance in the external when it's this long. But obviously on long hair, you don't see the mistakes so much. So with short hair, it's easier to get the balance correct, but your mistakes show a lot more. So I find it's kind of an even keel. Um, so we try and, and do things as precise as we can, and we normally get pretty close. I would like to think in the millimeters. <laughs> I would like to think in the millimeters. But there we go. Anyone's welcome to come with a little measuring stick. J J Jacinto, Jacintha, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, said hard to get bleached hair even when it's because when it dry it shrinks. It's a good point. Yeah, I mean. When you're using the right tension at the same time. Yeah, I think the, the good thing is obviously when you are pulling hair down with tension, you do manage to get um, a, a fairly good idea. So if you're visually looking at it, yeah, one side dry, one side wet is going to be a big problem. But if you are pulling it down with tension, you tend to get a pretty good within a millimeter understanding of, 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 of where the length is, I believe. Absolutely. So what you can see is my section works from the front all the way to the back. I'm just taking my fingers horizontally. I'm measuring my elevation underneath and I'm working in my shape. I know that the center has to be balanced, so I'm working to blend it into the flat in the back. And so our fingers are just working through from the front to the back, connecting into this amazing undercut we had. So Louise cool. is asking if the nape is undercut, which... Yeah, the whole thing was undercut. So it was undercut actually to kind of behind the ears, just straight across. It was quite short. Luckily for me, it had grown out a little bit, so it works into something a little bit softer that we can play with as well. So you can see that the section works from the front all the way to the back. Now, in the back, I've already cut the other side. So what it's allowing me to do is have a guideline from the front, work my way to the guideline in the back, and make sure I'm measuring my elevation with my fingers as well. Guys, thank you so much for all the questions. We love the questions, so please, thank you for the questions. We want you to do us a massive favor. We want you to message some birthday messages to James, you know, whatever you like. They we love you. Fast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that, I like that, I like that. We've got to make him feel special because I'm making him work on his birthday, so there's got to be some kind of benefit to this. Um, so Bobby said, uh, wet hair and blonde hair stretch easily. Do you take that into consideration? Yeah, luckily when you've got a colorist as good as Francesco, there's not too bad on the elasticity. So thank you, Francesco. It's giving me a little wink behind the camera, so I like that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do try and take, obviously, the way that the hair is going to react in my fingers into account. Now, whether we're talking about blonde hair, stretchy hair, curly hair, straight hair, Asian hair, all of the hair types will react differently and it's up to us to interpret how they're going to react and understand. So if it's very damaged hair and it has an elasticity problem, I'm obviously not going to put in as much tension as I would normally do. Uh, when it's curly hair, I'm trying to understand how much it's going to jump. When it's straight Asian hair, I'm thinking about how much it's going to stick out or in terms of if I have a little bit more length, is it going to sit nicer? Maybe with a little bit more tension, I'm going to create graduation so it's going to sit in more curved. If you have Asian hair and you don't put tension in, it's going to sit more stacked. These are all things that you think about while you're cutting, to be honest, or at least that's what's going through my head. Beautiful. The shapes are incredible. Well. Thanks so much, man. <clears throat> really nice. Okay, so do, do you find with this it's just a repetition thing? 100%. I think everything in hairdressing is about repetition. And actually a lot of things in life are about repetition as well. So if you get into the vibe of this, this is why I like to do one side and then the other. Because you have a better flow from the front to the back. If you have to do this and then stop and then do that and then stop and then do this, your elevation will never be the same. It will be very difficult for you to have consistency in your work. So what I always try and do is I try very hard to make sure that the flow from the front to the back is good and I have consistent elevation when I work. And I think those are the key things that we have to remember as well. Cool. Yeah, we've got Polybius, Polybius from uh, Cyprus, and they're waiting for you in Cyprus. Ah, oh, thanks so much, man. <laughs> yeah, good old Polis. <laughs> So Did I say that like Yeah, yeah but we just call him Polis, so that's Polis. the easy one. What's up, Polis? What's up, Polis? Thanks for tuning in, man. 
Cool. So guys, let us know where you're tuning in from. Please like and share this video. We want to try and get out as far as we can. Share away. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. We want to have a test. And we're going to see, where's the furthest place from London that's tuning in today? <laughs> we had someone from New Zealand. Where's the furthest place from London tuning in? Where will it be? Anyone, anyone from Siberia? Come on. Anyone in Pakistan? Well, I guess at one point. Maybe New Zealand. Maybe New Zealand. You guys, Fiji. Man. Fiji, yeah. Any Fijians in the house? Exactly. Anyone in Hawaii tuning in? Come on, guys. Love it. Uh, has, has anyone let us know if anyone's tuned in to any of our Slate Lives as, do, as well that we do? We do once a month. Uh, me and Francesco normally, we do a Slate Live, Michael, sometimes. So let us know if you're tuned into one of those. That'd be cool. So if you like all of these things that we're doing, we always do head sheets as well. And so the head sheets, you can watch them on our Facebook page. So we always go through and actually give you a detailed head sheets of how we do the haircut. So if you want to know how we do the haircut, just go on to our Facebook and we'll, you can check out the head sheets for this and the hair brand and the Facebook lives. Perfect. Uh, so, so far we've got Toronto, Arizona, nice. Body, Scotland. Oh, Scots. you didn't win the furthest away, but you win the heart. <laughs> Straight Pisa, in Italy, oh, Detroit. Beautiful. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Oh, sorry. So what we're doing now is we're just doing a little test from the top to make sure if we see that the widest point is in the middle, that means that we have balance. Right now, I can see I'm about a millimeter off, Dennis. Millimeter, <laughs> not half an inch, millimeter. So what it means is it means my elevation is not quite enough at this point. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit more and I'm just going to take off the amount that I saw. So I saw half a millimeter was too long at the top. So what I'm doing is I'm working through taking half a millimeter off from the sides now. So when I put it up, we're going to have a nice bit of balance in there. Sweet. So that's gorgeous. So now what we want to do is we want to blend the back through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little bit of a recap and now I'm going to start on the back as well. Cool. So on Michael Pizzolini's, this is the beautiful Petra. This is the gorgeous James Akers. It is his birthday today, so send the alcohol that you have in your cupboard here straight away and we'll get cracking up. Don't worry. So, Petra, bro, came in with this amazing little undercut. It's kind of been hidden now from what I've done, but it was really severe. It just came straight across, and so it was kind of about there. And basically, that undercut was just gone straight across and it had been shaved. It had been grown out now, and what we did was we took sections from the front to the back and we just worked through horizontally all the way around. We took the next section from the front to the back and we just worked through horizontally all the way to the back. We did the same thing across every section, lifting up slightly more each time until there was no hair left. Same on the second side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the graduation. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be working through some nice vertical sections through the back and just making sure everything blends nicely and then I'll actually be layering the top as well because I want this to be a really modern, soft look. Okay. So what we do is we just comb the hair down from the back. We'll actually take all the hair in. So I'm just not caring what goes in. I'm just combing all the hair into the back. Obviously, I care about what I'm doing. I'm just you know, right. it, not taking any sections yet, right? You can see straight away how that gives it a softer look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I always love these kind of like off the face, comb the back lovely strong looks as soon as you do things horizontally as well it gives it strength so we, we love that kind of stuff always if people want to know how do i get more accurate work within the hair we we'll just use water it's one of the easiest things that you could possibly use to give things more accuracy it gives you control it gives you strength in the work it makes everything everything much easier so tip number one for accurate work is 100 percent use water so guys if you have any questions let us know if you want to know how old james is let us know <laughs> i have no idea in fact who can guess how old james is today <laughs> let's see let's see if anyone gets it right and if you're thinking it's 12 you're close so don't worry he's, he's a young one yeah cool. so we're just taking a nice clean section from the top to the bottom on both sides. What we do is to get it nice and clean in our fingers, we put our middle finger 
not because we're being rude, just because it gives us more accuracy. We rest it on the skin. Then what we do is we comb onto the skin, onto our fingers, and then we pull through. I'm just gonna get you to tilt up a little bit. That's perfect. And then we just bring it down. So now I'm gonna work through the back and I take from the shortest point and I'm just gonna blend that nice little bit of graduation through. So I'm just letting the hair fall down. So the elevation is quite low and we're just working through. So again, putting our finger on for a nice bit of control and we're working it through. Cool, Amanda's giving me a 31. Don't know about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Amanda, be kind. Oh, no, a lot of people were right. It's 28, so well done. There we go. <laughs> you win nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'll have to think of something. If anyone's in the vicinity of London, you can get a little kiss from James. <laughs> something to take home with you. I'll be found somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm just working through from the top to the bottom again. So all the way from the top down to the bottom. And we're just combing through and connecting it in. So what I mean by that is we're combing it through. We're finding the last place where we connected the graduation and we're working down. So what this is doing is it's just slimming the back and it's just double checking what we've done as well. Because we work through horizontally and we work one side to the other, there's a chance that that graduation ends up being a little bit steppy little bit of a problem maybe one side doesn't match the other but so like pulling everything back it's just going to create that softness and it makes that head shape just a little bit more sticky out protruding i don't know what's the what's, yeah it's the posture word for it right sticky out is maybe not the right technical word <laughs> but you guys get what i mean right yeah so if you guys get what i mean please give it a thumbs up let, let us know if we're if we're having a bit too much fun today if we're making sense or not <laughs> sorry so again, we work through the one side, now we're gonna work through the second side. So it's the same concept, we comb the hair back. So we comb it all the way back, take a nice section. Section works from the front all the way to the back. And then what we do is we comb it slightly over onto our previously cut section, and then we start. Now normally from here, I'll start from the bottom, just because it's easier for me to see the guideline from what I did on the first side. So again, combing it nice a few times until we get a nice clean shape and we follow the guidelines. So the good thing is once you've done the center section on one side, you have a really nice guideline for working through to the second side. Okay, we've got a great question from Morgan. Hi Morgan. Hi Morgan. For this hairstyle, do you always cut blood? Um, no, I, I personally, that's my style of cutting, to be honest. I like to cut things blunt and then I like to chop into them afterwards if necessary. What I don't do is I don't normally do the whole haircut chopping because I find I don't have as much balance. So I don't have the accuracy for getting a balanced, strong haircut in. And I always find that I can make things softer at the end with balance if I do it blunt. So in my personal style of cutting, there's no right or wrong, is doing it blunt first and then afterwards breaking into it. So I try and do blunt first, nice, strong haircut, balanced, smooth, and then I can always break it afterwards. You know, it's a lot of the time what they'll teach you, you know, even if you do things like uh, styling, they always say, if you're gonna do a messy look, do it really clean first and then mess it up because it looks more intentional. So if you style a haircut really messy, it's difficult to know where it's going. So we always try and do as clean as possible and then we can always fuck it up afterwards. <laughs> Technical term. Technical term. Sorry guys, it's a live video. You can't believe that. <laughs> so what we're doing now is we do a little cross check from front to back. I'm just taking diagonal sections and I'm just going to comb it down and just have a little gander that it's all connected across from the one side to the other. This is just like a very basic check as well. We're just doing it nice and quick. A basic check, check but makes a huge difference. Yeah, right? of course. I mean, look at the end of the day. It is the check that makes all the difference in the world. And that's what I said. We are not good hairdressers because we do it perfectly. Or we're good hairdressers because we take the time to check what we're doing as we do it. So I don't like to refine my haircut for half an hour when I finish a haircut because I know that it's pretty good because I've already done my check as I've gone. So I do the check when it's wet. And then when I dry it, I know that it's where I want it to be. As opposed to a lot of hairdressers who dry it and then spend half an hour 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever, pointing into it just to try and get it to look how they imagined it. So at, at Slate, what we try and do is we try and teach you the, the one way to do it where you get your 
shaping quickly, you get your hair cutting quickly, you get your vision in quickly, then you have more time if you want afterwards to do some personalization, but you might not need it. You only do it if it really, if you're trying to create something like a look, a softer look that you couldn't do in the first place. Does that make sense? That makes sense that makes to sense everyone? To All right, good. Makes sense to James. Let us know if it makes sense to you guys. Right. No pressure, but the big boss is watching. Uh-oh. Oh, hey, Greg. No. No, no. the proper big boss. Come on. Oh, hi, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> His wife. So the wife, when the wife's watching, we know that there's trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, she's she's going to tell me uh, a few things tonight, I'm sure, about, about, about it. But there we go. So, moving on. Louise has just asked what texture the hair is. So the hair actually is beautiful texture. Obviously, it's straight, it's medium to thick hair, and really, uh, Francesco's done a great job of keeping the, uh, the, the, the strength in it, the condition in it, exactly. So, uh, so now that we know that the condition's great, it's quite straight hair. It maybe has an ever so slight kin to it, but it, it's, it's perfect. So yeah, we're very lucky on that one. <clears throat> so just taking through the last one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the top for you but before I do that I'll just give you a little bit of a recap so I'm Michael this is James this is the beautiful Petra and so what we're doing today is we're doing a really cool haircut for you Petra came in with a nice little short undercut under here what we did was we just took horizontal sections across the head from the front to the back we worked through horizontally and we just connected the front to the back. Then we took the next section and we did the same thing. We worked from the front all the way to the back. Same on the second side until all the hair had been brought down and been graduated into it. Beautiful. Yeah? So what we're going to do now is after we've done that on the one side, the second side, we are going to layer the top. Now layering the top is going to give a softer, choppier feel. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes people think that they have to chop into hair to make it soft. And it's just not really true, to be honest. What you can do is you can layer things, which gives you that soft feeling without having to actually completely chop into the haircut. So it's different if you're chopping into it, and it's different if you're layering it. So you don't always have to chop into things to make things soft. And today will be the evidence why. So if you were teaching one of the courses, Michael, what yeah. haircut would this come under? So this would probably come under an abstract just because it's a real combination technique. So do you want to explain the course? Yeah, of course. So we have a few different courses with us at Slate. So one of the courses that you should always start with is called Geometric. Now, Geometric is your course that you're going to learn when you really want to master hair cutting. What it does is it gives you all the fundamentals all the real important principles of hair cutting and then what you do is you learn the different shapes and the techniques so the easiest thing to do is to do a creative haircut the hardest thing to do is to do a strong beautiful classic haircut and so that's really what the geometric courses are designed to do they're designed to teach you how to do your lines layers and graduation absolutely master them and then your different shapes, your round, square, and triangle shapes. So using all the different shapes and all the different techniques in a very pure way with perfect balance. Because doing it with perfect balance is, again, a very, very difficult thing. It's the hardest thing in the world to do a really nice classic haircut. If you want to, if you want to impress me, do me a perfect classic haircut. Because anyone can do a creative haircut because... There's no right or wrong. It's kind of, if you say that's what you wanted, then that's fine. But when it comes to classic haircuts, you know, there, there is a format to follow and there is a balance. So essentially, we say if you really want to master cutting, you come on our geometric courses. Now, once you've done that course, you do want to move on from that. And that's where we start taking you into abstract. Now, abstract is in between creative and your foundation, your geometric. So what happens if you want to mix a round shape on one side with a triangle shape on the other to give something a bit more asymmetry? That's where abstract falls into it. So you're definitely always mixing shapes, you're mixing techniques. So we teach you how to go from layers into graduation, back into layers again, and so on. So if you've ever wondered how you can make a tailored haircut for your individual client, 
that is not creative, but is not a classic haircut, then abstract is the course for you. So you're gonna learn how to mix all the different shapes and it's a more dynamic, more modern way of cutting. So we really like that course as well. It's a brand new course from us. It's a six day series. And then we have our final cutting course after men's as well, but I'll talk about men's afterwards, which is creative. So obviously creative is utilizing disconnection within the haircut as well. And so that would be all of ours. It would be geometric for your classics, abstract for your more dynamic modern way of cutting, and then creative for the crazy ones like me. Okay, cool. So, looking good. How are you feeling, Marta? Yeah. yeah I mean, it's weird because I can't see myself. Yeah, don't worry. We like to keep it as a surprise. <laughs> That's fine. So what I'll do guys is I'll do a really, really, really quick recap and then we'll go over with the top as well. So you can see that the length Petra came in with and you can see the length here. So we had some really long hair when Petra came in. What we did was she had this really amazing undercut. We took horizontal sections. We elevated each time as we worked, working all the way around and then we just kept working all the way up. We did the same on both sides. We then actually took from the back and we just graduated in the back a little bit more just to make sure everything blended. We took it then from the top and we layered it through. I'm just gonna do a quick cross check over the top and then we'll do the fringe. So guys. I was just asking about the layers. What kind of layers would you put on there? So um, what I would say is again, they kind of work with, within a squareness to them, just because if we look from left to right, we can see that it's a flatness on top. Now, I don't want to confuse you guys with too many technical slate words, because um, at the end of the day, you know, you can go very deep into these things, but I think the most important thing is to just realize that it's very flat on top. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for something flat. Anything that you do that has a point on top will equal a very heavy weight when it falls down. So if you've ever seen a haircut that looks like someone had a mushroom cut on the top of it, that is what normally always when you find a corner on top. So do me a favor, guys. Try this one in your salon. If you ever have a client walk in and she has a mushroom haircut, and you know what I'm talking about, right? Check the top of the haircut, and I bet you a million bucks of Monopoly money, a million bucks, right? I have to be specific then, I don't want to get sued, right? Yeah. Um, you will find a corner on top. So lift, lift the hair up at the top, look, and you will find a corner on top, and that's what gives you the mushroom or the fullness on top. So this is just a really flat layer. It's just to slim it down and create a little bit of softness. Now, we've seen this long fringe that we have here. Who out there thinks we should take it short? Let us know, guys. Yeah. And how short do you want to see it go? Becky was just okay. asking a quick question about where the course is based. So our courses are based all around the world, but obviously if you really want to come see us in our London home, we'd be more than happy to have you here. So you can come to our London home that we're based in now. We've got a new facilities being built, which is going to be ready in January, and that's in Berwick Street, so just off Oxford Circus. So a little bit of a chance for a bit of shopping. Right and in the heart of Soho. Right home. in the heart of yeah. Soho. So lovely, lovely location. But we'll announce everything about that new location being built in London soon. Everyone's saying super short with the fringe. Super short. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Petra? Pretty sure it's super short. <laughs> She's like, why don't you come and get your hair cut then? <laughs> All right, beautiful. So we'll go for something a little bit in between super short. I mean, uh, probably for most of you out there, you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty short. So. <laughs> Sure, so. Yeah, famous last word. <laughs> so just try and find this one. So if you want to rest your head back, so what we'll do is put the vest. Yeah, exactly. That's what we can do. That's fine. What do you think, guys? Kind of like that short, that short. I can Don't see. worry, Francesca. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. So just coming back. We rest our hand onto the head as well, and we're just gonna go for a really nice choppy fringe. That's really cool. Yeah, so that's what we wanna see. Hair coming off. There's no, no there's not there's nothing that's a better feeling than that one, I'll tell you that. 
Just um, talk us a little bit through the options of the fringe shapes. Yeah, so basically I would say that there's, obviously there's a lot of different ones and we're not going to talk about this connection because we could be here all night as well. But the basic, the really basic different shapes you have for fringes is a bit of a U-fringe. So it's a little bit of a Betty Page kind of fringe where it goes shorter and it ends up longer in the middle. Then you have ones which are rounded. So we would say, you know, this is more of like a triangle shape, saying it's a Betty Page fringe. Then you have a rounded shape and then you have a square shape as well. So those are the fundamental ones. Obviously there's a lot of different varieties, but those would be the fundamental ones that we can talk about as well. And how do you choose your section for the fringe? Is so yeah, again, it's, it's kind of based upon Sorry. It's based upon the shape that you're taking um, within the haircut. So, you know, right now I'm going for something quite straight across. So I'm really just looking to have the same kind of sectioning when I work as well. That's really what I'm looking at. Um, you know, obviously the density of the section is very important. I have to be able to see what I'm doing in terms of the thickness as well. Looking great. So when you're looking for a slightly more shattered edge, then maybe you're working with the... Yeah, the so what I'm doing is I'm doing the pointing now because really I know that 100% I want to see something a lot softer in the fringe. And fringes, what happens is when you actually point into them, they end up being a, a little bit shorter. So what I, uh, <laughs> what I want to do is... Sorry, Petra. You know, we're just, uh, we're just trying to see <laughs> how much hair we can leave on the face there. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I, I know that if I end up... Uh, pointing into it. Sorry, it's all gone now. So what happens is I know that when I point into things, they end up being quite a lot shorter afterwards. So what I wanted to do was go straight away into the pointing so that I'm not ending up doing too much afterwards as well. Ooh, so that's looking good. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, let us know. We'd love to hear them for you. We'll do a little recap quickly, and then what we'll do is we'll start drying it as well, so you guys can see the drying process. Perfect. Looking great, mate. Lovely shape. Cheers. What do you think, guys? Everyone let us know. Yeah. Yeah, see you soon, eh? It's cute. So what I'm doing is I'm just elevating it out. I'm just slightly graduating the fringe area. So I'm lifting it up. There's normally a little bit of a corner or a point in the middle and I'm just softening it so when it sits back, it sits a little bit softer so there's not the weight in the middle of the haircut anymore. Perfect. Beautiful. Right, so in a minute when Mike was drying, we'll just quickly go through the colour as well. Yeah. Okay, I'll still the camera for a minute. Yeah, that sounds great, guys. Okay, so... Can we swap over quickly, Francesco? Do you want to talk about the colour? Yes. Okay. Right, so we point. come over to where Petra is maybe. Just come around here because the light a bit from this way. Perfect. Right. Hello everyone, Francesco. And um, so we had the color. So Petra came in the salon um, yesterday and we had a little chat. And uh, I saw that she had uh, light blonde, basically like six months of regrowth of um, past highlights. So what I done first, um, it was like mm -hmm. pretty light in a the mid lens and the ends, just trying to clean the past color with the last one that they've done, and then do a scalp bleach. Obviously, I tried to use as much as I could of products to keep and maintain nice the, actually the condition of the hair, which I really care about. I don't know if Michael um, was checking during the haircut. How was the texture? Beautiful. It was amazing, guys. Really, really amazing. Well, Sorry, I'm not a very steady cameraman in comparison to... Um, come closer, we can watch the drying as well. Why don't you come on this side for us so we yeah. can see. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, beautiful condition. Really amazing colour on this one. You know, we're very, very fortunate. Um, it's just sitting beautifully. So I love the kind of texture as well. You know, obviously when blondes are worked into it, you know, it, it has that choppy feeling to it, which I love as well. So really, really cool. So tell, tell me again, uh, so you, you did first the bleach on this? So just put like in the first, the mid ends and the ends, just to remove the color, but at the same time, just trying to clean it up, the past color they've done. Okay, so you, you, you so, actually used something that would remove the color that was there before? Yes. Okay, 
tool and I fill out here everything to yeah. try to put in a level 9 undercoat. What I've done then, because she was already a light long, so let's say a level 7, um, I was doing this cut bleach. Okay, so if you put in like a pre-light in that, then you, then you did a scar bleach after that? Is yeah. That what brand of pre-lightener did you use? Sorry? What brand of pre-lightener? So we, we actually working with L'Oreal in the salon, so, uh, which I worked really well with that product, the re-lightener. Um, so I was using multi-technique for all the works I've done. And just for clean a little bit more the color, once I finished cut bleach by the same time the lamp in the end, was still cleaning a little bit before turning up with a little bit of um, lightener with oxygen and uh, a little bit of water just to not make it too strong, the products on the air. Beautiful. I mean, you can see the colors absolutely gorgeous, can't you? Uh, it's amazing. And how long did it take you to do the whole thing from just <laughs> So, uh, let's be honest. Come so, on. because I really want to make the color as clean as possible, we actually took like more seven hour and a half. Wow. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. But it's worth the wait. Yeah, the results speak for themselves. That's what I like. So, if you like the color, guys, give it a thumbs up. Give Francesco a thumbs up as well. Uh, Francesco, I've just got a quick couple of questions for you. How did you avoid the hair that was already highlighted? How to avoid it? So actually I was sectioning, I was caring about the pre lightener highlights on the end. Yeah. And I just put the bleach between the regrowth and the pass color. Right. And try to make it like a little bit usage. Just using a little bit of bleach with the, with the tint brush. Try to make it blended between the color side and the lightning one. Beautiful. And what was the toner that you used? So, I will consider it a secret, but <laughs> I actually mix um, Marginal, Dierichess and Yellow Light. Okay, so right. three colors contemporary. Um, in the academy, they might say, don't do it, but that's why we are here, hydrated, just to experiment and try different things. Beautiful. That's something that I love so much is, you know, obviously you learn the rules, and then you learn how to break the rules, and then you realize why you shouldn't have broken the rules, but then you find something that does work and it's magic. And you know, there's so much new things to do with hairdressing always. There's always something new to learn and some different way that everyone's gonna do it. Ooh, Perfect. So what I actually done was uh, mixing 1012 with clear and uh, metallic shades, the 12 one, because I was trying to get rid of the yellow but at the same time, just to make a little bit of the, I would say, highs blonde because I really like high like, shades, as, as wide as possible. Oh, cool. This is definitely as wide as possible. So even, isn't yeah, it? It's amazing. So much so that even, uh, who was it, Morgan's going to do it on her own hair tomorrow. So. Oh, I love it. <laughs> well, if, Morgan you want, said, Did if you, you want to hire Francesco, you can, it's fine. <laughs> He's available on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> right, Francesco, let me Just, give you this. Yeah, I want to Perfect. Okay. Cool. So it's okay, Francesca. If you want to come back here, maybe everyone can see a little bit better. If you want to just unplug it, it's fine. And come over. We're pretty much done now. So looking very cool. It's that lovely little Amelie short box haircut. I absolutely adore it. I hope you guys do too. I, I really love these things. So for me, I would actually try and wear this really kind of a little bit more messy with a little bit of a choppy fringe as well. You know, I love the softness. If you do want to kind of smooth it out, what I always do is I remove corners. So I know that there's a little bit of a corner here between the top and the bottom. So remember guys, if you cut something here and then you cut something here, you're always going to have a corner in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up and we're going to find that corner for you right now. So there we go, we found the corner from the top to the bottom. And what we're doing is we're just rounding the corner. So I'm not removing the corner, I'm rounding the corner. There's a big difference between taking out a lot of hair and just ever so slightly rounding or softening a corner out. And I think really that the people who are 
very precise and good at what they do, know what the difference between rounding a corner and taking a corner out. So we still want the shape the same, we just want a softer blend from the top to the bottom, so there's no weight between the top and the bottom, there's no weight lines, there's no steppiness. If that makes sense guys, let me know, give it a thumbs up. Everyone really loves it. Amazing. Good, good comments. It's good. always nice. Like that. Guys, so please do like and share the video if you like what you see. We'd, we'd really appreciate it. And <laughs> hopefully, the people that get to watch it will as well. So, don't forget, guys, if you want to see some of the other hair brain lives we've done, you can always go on our website. Our website's slatehair.com. That's slatehair.com dot com and you can check out some of the other hair brain lives we have we don't have all of them that we've ever done but we have most of them you can also just type into facebook slate hair education hair brain live or hb live and you'll find a lot of the work we do that's right petra knows it sing it and shout it so we're really easy to find it we really appreciate you guys tuning in and what we also uh, will do is we always go live on our personal slate hair education that's slate Hair Education's Facebook, and we go live to give you a detailed head sheet of how we did this haircut like we always do. And so for those of you hair nerds who want to see some nice little diagrams of how it works, please stay tuned and you'll be watching it live on our Facebook. And we'll style it in a couple of different ways and get yeah, some nice pictures of food. Exactly. We always post a nice after picture quite, quite soon after we finish. See, fringe is looking good, cut it dry, I really like it. You know, we're going for something quite soft and shattered, so I think it's absolutely perfect. We can see that when I cut it choppy, it kind of worked out really nicely as well. Can I just have a face brush, please, James? So I'm just gonna... You can go through it. Fan myself off there. Yeah. We'll go for it. There you go. Let's take this one off and give it a little one side of the hair dryer as well. Cool. So, if you have stayed for this long, we're assuming you liked it. So please like and share, let your friends know, tag them in. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us, everyone that watches from around the world. We do the Hair Brain Live takeovers every month. So every single month we do a Hair Brain Live takeover. We've been doing them for over a year and a half now. You can watch the next one on September the 3rd with us, wherever we're going to be in the world. But I'm sure we'll have a Slate Live between them. Yeah, and, them and if you guys do like what we do, please follow us on Slate Hair Education's Instagram and Facebook, and you can see some other things that we do. But Petra, if you don't mind to stand up for me, we're just going to give a little recap and show everyone what we've done. Gorgeous. Really Love it. Thank you. So. Thank you, Petra. Can I look at this one? Wow! Wow! Yeah. I think Petra's wow. just seen it. <laughs> cool, so we'll just do a little bit of a recap. So if I turn spin this to the side. So Petra came in with this lovely little undercut. What we did was we started to work from the front and we worked all the way to the back. So our sections that we took across, looks like that? Yeah, we could was from the front to the back and we just worked through horizontally all the way from the front to the back taking sections working across the head from the front to the back personally what i like to do is i love seeing these things kind of start a little bit off the face with a little bit of a kind of like what do you call it sideburn uh, i'm trying to find the right word for that but there we go that little bit of softness in the front yeah that's a better word softness right so that little bit of softness in the front gorgeous so i like it off the back we worked horizontal sections we then layered the top and connected through the back and we just worked through the sides as well. So we brought through the sides and we took the corners out. We then brought in this beautiful little choppy fringe. And yeah, you can wear it either forwards or back, but we absolutely love it, guys. So thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. Remember, it's James Aker's birthday, right? Birthday guy. So, wish him a happy birthday, stalk him, send him alcohol, he'd much appreciate it. Thank you very much for tuning Thank in everyone. Thank you so much guys, cheers. We're going to see you in five minutes on Slade Hair Education's Facebook page for the head sheets. Good night from London, see you guys soon.